One team I did not anticipate talking about just straight after the draft. Foolish of me, you should say, because um, they've really killed the draft for the last several years. That's the Atlanta Hawks. I did not anticipate talking about them immediately after the draft because obviously I was going to talk about the Pistons. I was going to talk about other top teams, but the Hawks just did too much to my liking to not talk about them immediately. Obviously, the connection we have as well because I was really on board that Hawks run and yeah, whatever. We're not getting into that right now. We're just talking about the draft and I'm no draft expert. Let me just get that out of the way. So I am not the most versed person when it comes to prospects there, but there was someone who I looked at quite a lot and his name is Sharif Cooper. The 48th pick? The 48th pick? You gave up, what, the equivalent of the 48th pick? For Sharif Cooper, 20 and 8? The man who's one of the best passers, playmakers in the draft? The man who is really considered a top 20 prospect by most? Some people had him as high as top 10, I saw. Some people were that high on him. 48? Back up to Trey Young. Trey Young similarities. The only person since Trey Young to put up those kind of numbers in college. Oh my God, again, Hawks, man. You keep getting steals. But they just do. They just keep getting steals. You just can't question the schlank. The schlank man does it again, and it's just looking great. This is someone who, you can see the concerns. We'll talk about the concerns anyway. Also, Jalen Johnson was drafted, who we're going to talk about as well. It's not going to be all about Sharif Cooper. I'll just get that out of the way. Drop a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you knew that would be much appreciated. I'm forgetting to say that when I'm talking about the draft right now, because it's exciting. It's exciting times. But let's talk about Sharif Cooper. Let's talk about the Hawks first, because... I'd imagine Lou Will will re-sign. I'm not too sure. Sharif obviously seems like the long-term replacement coming off the bench. Well, I mean, he's in Atlanta right now, so whether or not he can become a starting level point guard in Atlanta, he's not going to be that because Trey Young is there and him and Trey Young aren't going to coexist in the same back on. If that happens, well, I mean, that'll just, I don't know. That's just insane. That is insanity right there. So I, I'm not putting anything past the NBA right now or the Hawks, but I do not expect that to happen. So I expect him to be the successor to Lou Williams coming off the bench and providing a similar kind of spark to Lou Will. But let's just talk about Lou Will, sweet Lou for a second. I expect him to run around for another year because he did talk about how he thought about retiring, but so it kind of told me that it wasn't all about the money for him. If he thought about retiring, he probably could have got another contract somewhere else. So it wasn't all about the money. It's about where he is, where he wants to play his basketball, what he wants to do with the team. And I'm pretty sure he's happy in Atlanta. I'm pretty sure he's happy playing there. Obviously, he played a big part in them going to the Eastern Conference Finals. So everything would suggest to me, based off him wanting to nearly retire last year before he got traded, that he would run it back for another year. That's just my suspicions anyway, and I expect them to pay him for another year. That's what I expect. So maybe Sharif Cooper won't be an immediate guy to get 20 minutes a night off the bench, which I think he could do based off everything I've seen, based off everything I've heard. And yeah, I did a little bit of research on Cooper, one of the prospects that I really did like and I thought could be something. So let's just talk about it. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about the obvious weaknesses first, because straight away, 48th pick is ridiculous. The 48th pick is ridiculous. I didn't see anyone that low on him. No one in the world seemed that low on him, even close to that low on him. So to go all the way down to 48 is something else. We also have to consider straight away the things that we do not know that are out of our control. There's interviews, there's workouts, all of those things are there. Those things are in place for teams to make these kind of decisions where you're shocked that someone drops that low, but sometimes there is a reason that is beyond what we just see on the court and what we see in the highlights and what we see in the tape. Sometimes there's a reason for that that we don't know, so we're not going to get into that. Unfortunately, we can't really speculate if we have no idea. So let's just talk about his weaknesses on the court because straight away shooting is the one. If teams don't believe he can be a good enough shooter at 22% from three this season, then, well... He's going to struggle. He's six foot. He's very slight. He does have some similarities to Trey in his game, but Trey can obviously shoot the ball. And well, Sharif Cooper, there's going to be some serious repercussions if he can't shoot the ball. Players are going to go under screens. Players are going to drop back on him. And he's just not going to have the same effect as a passer as getting to the rim. There's so many things in his game that rely on him at least keeping the defenses honest. Like every point guard, realistically, pretty much every point guard, particularly when you're just six foot and just slight and you need every single advantage you have possible to not be able to shoot is an issue. Now, there is possibilities he's going to be a decent enough shooter. He shot over 80% from the line, over 100 attempts, and that's some of his positives. Let's just get straight into the positives as well, because there's a reason why I'm high on this guy going at 48 to the Hawks and why I think the Hawks have smacked it out of the park again, because, I mean, he got to the line 100 times in just 12 games. Yeah, he just played 12 games. So maybe that's what teams are concerned about. I know there were some eligi eligibility things 
There's a lot of things that are kind of unknown about Cooper, but what we do know is 20 and 8, he's productive. He's a passing wizard. The man just finds gaps. He finds holes. He finds spaces. He's similar to Trey Young. When you come at him with a double team and you try to trap him, you can see him weave out of those things and make those passes. He's a great lob threat. He's a great lob passer, should I say. He's not a lob threat by any means. He's not catching lobs, but he's throwing lobs. John Collins, big O once he gets healthy. Rest up, big O, man. Rest up, big O. I didn't get a chance to talk about that, but rest up. That is obviously one of my favorite players. As you would know, and someone I was so high on that. It sucks. It sucks. Rest up, big O. But he is a great lob passer. So Collins, Gapella, Jalen Johnson, who we're going to talk about. Big O once he gets back healthy. Dinilo Gallinari, not Gallinari, but some of those other guys are going to be great lob threats for him to throw upstairs. Similar to Trey Young, he's going to be able to run the pick and roll. He's going to be able to do those things from day one, in my opinion. The shooting is a concern, but everything else, I mean, he does so well. He just does so well. He's just a wizard. He is like Trey Young. That's probably the most comparable player in terms of his passing and his ability to just weave in and out of traffic and find the plays and get to the rim and get to the free throw line. That's what he does so well. So that's what you're getting with the 48th pick. The concerns are over his shooting. Maybe this concerns over his attitude. Again, we can't speculate. We do not know. But if he can get his shooting right, it's a big if. It's a big if. But if he can get that right, defensively, he's not great. <laughs> I mean, he's six foot. He's very slight. He's not great defensively. Apparently, he switches off a little bit as well. Those are some of the things that I need to watch full games to see more. But apparently, he switches off a little bit. So defensively, he is not the best guy, but... Offensively, he does have a lot of tools. If he can get that shooting decent, oh my God, that is a steal, man. It's just a steal and the Hawks have done it again. And he's in the right situation. As I said, Lou Williams, if he comes back another year, Trey Young, those are two guys that have shown you can be slight. That is literally the two perfect players to learn under. Literally the two perfect players to learn under. Trey Young, who is right now just looking like an MVP level candidate. Lou Williams, who's been a sixth man of the year and can show him what he needs to be if he's going to be a bench player or Trey Young, if he's going to be a starter. Those guys can run the pick and roll. <laughs> Do I need to explain why those two are just the perfect mentors to Sharif Cooper coming in? I don't. It just makes so much sense. So I'm excited to see what he can do. I think from day one, he can make an impact. It's all going to come down to if Lou Williams is on the rotation and how many guys are there. Because if there's not enough minutes to go around for him this season, he can learn under those guys. And hopefully next season, he's going to come back and make an impact. This is someone who, if he can get the shooting right, is just going to be a steal. It's that simple. I don't watch enough college basketball, but I know from what I've seen that he should be a steal if he gets that shooting down pat. And then Jalen Johnson, who with a 20th overall pick, also has the potential to be a steal. And I like this pick for similar reasons, but a little bit different reasons. His fit is so nice for the Hawks. He's just such a nice fit for the Hawks. At the 20th pick, he's someone with upside. People thought he might have been a top 10 pick heading into the draft in high school. He struggled at Duke. He didn't have the best season, but he's still got the talent. He's still got the frame. He's still got the athleticism. He's a great passer, and this is where I want to start with the passing. Think of Steph Curry. Think of Draymond Green. Yes, think of those guys. Think about Steph Curry when he gets double teamed at that hash, wherever it is. You know that place where he gets double teamed? Yeah, Trey Young gets the same treatment. He got it in the playoffs. And Jalen Johnson, I can see a similar situation where Trey Young's passing out of the double team to Johnson sitting in the middle of the three-point line and then has the decision-making to pass to an open shooter. He's got the potential. He can get to the rim or he can pass to an open shooter. He should be more of a threat attacking the rim than Draymond Green, hopefully. I'm not saying he's going to be a Draymond Green level player because he is a fantastic player. But offensively, you have that similar skill set to pass out from that double team that Trey Young finds him. That's what I can expect from him. So I think that's a huge thing for the Hawks. They don't really have enough of those guys that can take the pressure off Trey Young while also being versatile defenders, which is huge. He hasn't really lived up to his defensive potential yet from what I've seen in college, but he does have defensive potential because he's a unit. He's just, he's a, he's got the size, he's got the length, he's got the athleticism. There's question marks over his attitude, some of the things about him leaving like three different high schools and obviously leaving Duke early. Those are question marks, but that's the risk you take with someone and that's the Hawks have the chance to take those kind of risks. The Hawks are such a deep team right now. Trey Young, Bogdanovich, Clint Capella, Gallinari, Collins, Okongwu, DeAndre Hunter, Cam Reddish, Kevin Herder, Lou Williams, Sharif Cooper, Jalen Johnson. I think I missed one or two names as well. 
there's such a deep team right now that you can take those risks on guys that maybe have question marks over certain aspects of their game. He's not the greatest shooter. He shot 40% in college, but that was on like 10 attempts or something. He's not the greatest shooter. He doesn't have the best form. He didn't shoot great from the free throw line. So I don't expect him to be some knockdown shooter, but if he can keep the defense as honest, similar to Sharif, and provide that secondary outlet as a playmaker out of the pick and roll with Trey Young, and even handle the ball, have a few dribble handoff kind of possessions with different guys, I don't think he's going to immediately be a starter and obviously play a ton of minutes, but he's going to be a work in progress. And ideally, maybe this is the John Collins replacement. Maybe this is the John Collins replacement. That's all I'm saying. That could be a possibility. Obviously not from the get-go, that's not going to happen, but maybe going forward, this could be the Collins replacement. There's been rumors about rumors about a Cam Reddish trade. What's going to happen there? I'm not sure. I think they wanted to trade Cam Reddish for a draft pick if they were going to trade him. That was more so probably about contract situations, I believe. I don't know about that. We'll talk about that if that happens right now, but Jalen Johnson could be the long-term replacement for John Collins, and I really like the idea of him. People think he's got the potential to be a top player from this draft. The Hawks have a chance to take a swing on those kind of guys. Worst case scenario, hopefully he can be a versatile defender who can still pass. Worst case scenario, he can't shoot the ball, and he's just not really a threat as an offensive player outside of what he does alongside Trey Young, which Trey Young is going to make players who struggle offensively look a lot better than they are, which is why Jalen Johnson makes so much sense for the Hawks and why it's a perfect fit for him and Atlanta, which is important to note, sometimes we forget that these players with these interesting case scenarios where they're going to go, how they're going to perform, if they go to the right team, I mean, that is a huge step to them getting the best out of themselves and the team getting the best out of them. So Johnson going to the Hawks makes so much sense for him and for Atlanta. I can't wait to see how that goes. The Atlanta Hawks appear to have hit it out of the park again. They appear to have hit it out of the park again. I did not anticipate talking about the Hawks after this draft with the 20th and what the 48th overall pick. I did not anticipate that, but what I've seen from them is a lot of what I like. It's that simple. It's that simple. 